Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we are live. Hopefully everyone is having an awesome day today. What we're going to be talking about on today's show, the normal news and rumors. We're going to be talking about Indomitian Sue, the latest odds around Colin Kaepernick. We got some Madden leaks coming out here, and it's Cleveland Furl going to get end up getting dealt. We'll talk about all of that. As always, I got two mailbags on tap, so you can use hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and super chat. Shout out to everyone who is already watching. If you're watching the show right now, start spamming Raiders down in the comments. I see how excited everyone is. We're going to be breaking down some breakout candidates. I got six players to keep in mind. And then some dudes that I think the rest of the NFL world is sleeping on. And I think they're going to wake some people up. So out of the four players that you see on screen right now, totally random question, who is the best player on screen. I'm going to go ahead and give some shout outs here on the show. If you think it's Jonathan Hankins, type JH. Andre James, AJ. Malone Nichols, BN. Neil Farrell Jr., NF. Who is the best player on screen? Let me know what you guys are thinking. Short Dog, he's going to go with Bilal Nichols. We got Mystic, Nichols, NF from Neil Farrell Jr. from Raider 508. We got an AJ, a Andre James from Phillip. Just win, baby, from Raider Man 01. Terrell is going to go Neil. JH from Jonathan Hankins. Terrell, Edward Martinez. Blood saying, go out and sign John Ross. Get those votes going down below. Paul's going to go ahead and say Jonathan Hankins. Matt Solomon, I see you down there. Neil Farrell Jr., we are not only live on YouTube, we are also live on Rumble as well. So, major shout out to our Rumble audience. We're going to be doing an exclusive video on Rumble after hours. So please, if you haven't already, go to rumble.com slash Raiders Report. It's going to be a fun and interesting segment, and it's going to be on some sleepers. Probably the biggest reason why some of y'all went ahead and clicked on the video today is because Indomitian Sue, what's the latest on him? I will go through all the NFL news, and then I will tell you how the NFL news today that ended up going down how that impacts the silver and black. What I like to call this part of the show is the, the build-up. I want the audience to get in here. I want the audience to get ready. We have over 530 people watching right now. I appreciate all y'all. It's a May 31st, a random day in May, and people are watching the Raiders Report. Why? Y'all are diehards, and I really do appreciate that. If you are a diehard Raiders fan, go ahead and like the video right now. Believe it or not, it does help me out quite a bit. And the live pool and what you see on screen is the exact same question. Should the Raiders sign and Sue? I do this part of the show because I want to hear what you guys have to say. This show is built on the back of the nation. I can't just sit up here and talk to myself or else I look like that crazy guy I pass every morning when I'm walking to work. I don't want to be that guy. So why for yes and for no? Should the Raiders go out and sign and Sue? And seeing a lot of yeses from King Sanchez, Pia Estrada, Danny Sandoval, Dick So Solid Dixon. Love that name. I don't know how to pronounce the next one. It's literally N Q W E D T G F B H G. Did you just like enter? That's my YouTube name. All right, I get it. Brandon Vaughn, O'Neill Seward, Paul Gaines, Christopher, Michael Myers, Buzz Omatic, 69, Hustling, Hooligan. All spamming those Ys for yes. So here's the next thing. I want you to name a Raiders breakout candidate. I'm going to give you six players. And when I think of a breakout, I personally do not throw out rookies because in order for you to break out, you have to have at least one more season. That's rule number one for me. Number two is you can't have already totally broken out. So what does that mean exactly? It means that you can't be like one of the best players in the National Football League. I am going to cheat a little bit, and I'll, I'll tell you guys why. Also, I think of career year. Somebody who was about to have the best season that they have ever had in the National Football League. I have six names, but I want to know from all of you watching right now to the 625 crazy loyal Raider fans watching the Raiders report in May. Who is somebody that's going to break out, have a career year? Rock and Jock, Josh, Josh Jacobs, Foss Moreau from Madman Raider. 
We got another. Raider Nation Trish says Foss Moreau. Nate Hobbs from Brandon. Diablo from Ryan Sinner. Interesting. Jacobs from CJCSR. Foster from Hood Rich. Divine Diablo from Raider Nation. Hobbs from Tommy. We got, oh, okay, Crosby if they sign Sue. Jake is coming in for Diablo. Travon Merrick. O'Neal Seward. Another one's coming in from Merrick from Raider Man 01. Derek Carr from Brave Raider. I want you to go ahead and name a player on the Raiders that is going to break out. The next thing, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Raiders report, but I got into a conversation the other day, and I actually had a video that popped up on my Twitter. What's scarier, a moose or a grizzly bear? Because studies would show that a moose would F up a grizzly bear. Yeah, I mean, it's in the studio right now, I'm getting a lot of M's for mooses, and is it, are they mooses or is it geese? Are they deers? Either way. Again, this is not the English report. This is the Raiders report. What's scarier, a moose or a grizzly bear? And the way I would think about it is like, what's scarier, a hippo or a crocodile? The answer is a hippo because mono e mono, I really truly believe a moose Fs up a grizzly. I mean, they're three times the size of a bear. It's insane to me. So what's scarier? What are you thinking? We got CJ says a moose. Jamie's going to go moose. Buzz Maddox says moose. Daniel's going to go grizzly bear. I mean, I wouldn't want to face either animal. And if it was a grizzly bear against me, obviously I'm going to lose that one. But if a moose were to charge at you, I just feel like that's horrifying. There was a video of a moose in like six feet of snow running through the snow like I mean, he's just full-on sprinting. It's insane to me. Not even Denzel Perriman could bring him down. M for Moose, G for Grizzly Bear. Has absolutely nothing to do with today's show. I'm just curious what you guys have to say. Got a super chat so far. The first one on today's live video. Trade Jonathan Abram for Chuck Clark from the Ravens. First off, I personally believe that the Ravens would say no to that. All the reports that I've seen are Harbaugh. Head coach of Baltimore wants to keep Ch Chuck Clark. And the reason why these reports are coming up is because Baltimore went ahead. They drafted Kyle Hampton, number 14 overall. They signed uh, Williams to a five-year, $70 million deal. So it's kind of hard to fit or figure out where he's going to go. You don't really trade a box safety for a box safety. So I appreciate the idea of the trade. I'm just simply going to say that I think personally think that the Ravens say no to it. We got Bick, or Bick, <laughs> Nick, this random, random thing about me. My cousin, his name is Nick. The first time he ever got put into the newspaper in my hometown, they called him Bick. So now that, I think that's why it went to my mind. Why is the Chargers above the Raiders in power rankings when we put them out of the playoffs last year and we got better? I think it's because a lot of the times the NFL media, they're going to look at Justin Herbert. Herbert's going to take that next step forward. They added Khalil Mack. The Chargers also did get a little bit better this offseason. And I'm okay if people want to doubt the Raiders. It's okay. This team has always played a lot better when their backs have been up against the wall. 720 people tuning in, and my guy David Zahn is tuning in. David, I will see you tomorrow for some beers. <laughs> And for some food in Philadelphia, I'm curious to see how that whole day goes. If they sign Sue, car bombs tomorrow. I'm down. I will say the last time I did car bombs, it was not a pretty sight for not me, for the entire chat sports team, for Chuck, for my girlfriend. I mean, it was an absolute disaster. But Zahn, I'm down to do it if the Raiders go out and get Sue. And depending what time it happens, because I have a flight tomorrow at 1, I land in Philadelphia at like 6, we're getting dinner and drinks, I think, at like 7.30. If it happens and we're together, we'll go live on the Raiders Report together. It's going to be an interesting show. I'm ready to get it going, though. All right, y'all, coming up here live on the Raiders Report. I got some news, got some rumors, going to be talking about and Domican, as always, two mailbags. So if you want to get those questions, comments on the show, it's hashtag Raiders or you can go and super chat. Raiders breakout candidates. We're going to be going ahead and looking at six dudes that I think go ahead and take that next step. And then Raiders sleeper candidates. People, I think, are sleeping on a few guys. And I don't want you to... I don't want... Well... I don't want Raider fans to sleep on them. I'm okay if NFL and the media sleeps on them. That's better for us. That's going to be on Rumble after hours. So that is only, and I mean only, going to be on Rumble. So if you want to watch it, you got to go ahead and go over there. Coming up now, latest news, rumors around the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's get to it.
Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here, we're going to get into the latest news and rumors going on around the silver and black. We're going to talk about Atomic and Sue. There's been some trade buzz going on around Cleveland Furl. We're going to look at the latest odds around Colin Kaepernick and some Madden 2023 ratings. We're going to look at those as well. So in terms of the NFL news that happened today that could potentially impact the silver and black, Akeem Hicks, he has signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a one-year $10 million deal. It's quite a bit of money. The reason why this is relevant, because I saw it, and then I was like, oh, man, if Hicks is going there, that means that Ndamukong Sue is more than likely not going back to Tampa Bay. And the latest reports that were out were that the top two teams most interested in Sue were the Bucks and the Raiders. All right, well, if the Bucks are out, does that make the Raiders the favorites? I actually think so. So when I see this, I was like, I know for a fact that the Raiders are interested. I know for a fact that the Raiders have a need at defensive tackle. Yes, there are currently eight DTs on the roster. But realistically, you can have confidence in Bilal Nichols. You have confidence in Jonathan Hankins. He's recovering right now from a surgery. I've been told he's going to be 100% okay for the upcoming season. But then the other six players, you got two rookies, still some question marks there. The other four dudes, they're just depth. And you can't even tell me that all four of those players are a lock to make the roster. So you go out, you get a mean, nasty dude like Ndamukong, who's had six sacks in the past two seasons, 12 combined. Yes, he's 35 years old, but he can still get it done so if y'all watching right now want the Raiders to go out and sign and Dominican Sue like this video right now I bet you Sue's gonna start searching his name soon I want the Raiders to see this video if you want a Dominican Sue in silver and black like this video right now coming up next on the Raiders report Cleland Furl is he going to be getting dealt? There are some interesting stories around this, some interesting rumors that we will go ahead and get to. But you know what, ma'am? I got something pretty cool, and uh, let, let's talk about it here. Who do you all think could eat more? Do you think Jonathan Hankins or me? Eating competition. Who ends up eating more? Let's just say we're eating burgers. Type MR for me, or if you think it's Jonathan Hankins, let me know. Type JH. The reason why we're saying this is because I'm actually going to be doing a competitive eating contest with Raiders defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins. So if you want, get your tickets now. You can see the link down there below. It's chatsports.com slash burgers. Date and time, Saturday, June 11th from 1 to 4 p.m. Location, barcode burgers in Las Vegas, 1590 East Flamingo Road. The ticket price is 20 bucks, but the proceeds are going to the just one project all the proceeds we will do raffles we will do other giveaways and all the proceeds that we make they're going to go to the just one project which the just one project is a non-profit organization that connects community by inspiring people to give back get involved and make a difference in the lives of disadvantaged families and children our projects positively impact the people we serve and fill their basic needs so for Hankins and I we're going to try to tackle this and this kind of looks like a thumbnail that you would see on a Pornhub video but instead of a uh, you know what it's a burger it's a humongous burger it's three seven ounce patties it's like three and a half pounds plus we got to go ahead and tackle fries if you don't want to just see Jonathan Hankins and I eat some giant burgers here's some other players that are going to be in attendance Bilal Nichols Andre James Neil Farrell Jr. Jalen Richard former Raiders running back Kendall Vickers and I was told these guys might show up. So if Nate Hobbs and Jonathan Abram there, that's pretty dope as well. It's going to be a really fun experience. And remember, this all goes to charity. This venue barcode holds about 100 people. So it's going to be first come, first serve. So get your tickets now. They are going to go quick. You can scan this QR code here, or you can go down to the link, chatsports.com slash burger. Let's now talk about... Cleveland Furl and as a trade coming for Mr. Clee, I am going to give this one one just win baby head and I'm going to say there's a 25% chance of it happening why if the Raiders want to trade Clee because somebody's interested peace see ya hasta la vista but Bleach Report went ahead and they released a article about NFL vets who should seek a trade before the 2022 season I giggle to myself because Cleveland's 25 years old if that's what a vet is I understand he's been in the league for three years but 
Is a vet 25 who's played three years? I, I, I don't know. Furl was listed for the Raiders, and with the fact that Las Vegas has already declined his fifth-year option, I can wrap my mind around it. What Bleach Reporter, I do feel like, is struggling to realize here is, are there going to be anybody out there that wants to trade for him? I, I don't have the great answer for that. So this is what Bleach Report had to say. It's hard to imagine Furl doing any more for the Raiders in 2022 than he did the past three seasons. He's all but buried on the depth chart, and with new defensive coordinator Patrick Graham set to utilize more three-man fronts, Furl is just flat out a bad fit. He's not athletic enough to play rush linebacker, not big enough to hold the point of attack as a five-technique, and Furl badly needs a change of scenery, and there are some 4-3 defenses that teams like the Philadelphia Eagles, Kansas City Chiefs, and Houston Texans that might be willing to throw a late pick into a dice roll on Furl's potential. So, yes, I could see Philly and Houston being more likely. I wouldn't want the Raiders to trade him to Kansas City unless they gave us a better pick, honestly. I wouldn't just do it for a day three pick because, to me, Furl knows too much. But if the Raiders do decide to trade Klee, this is essentially what happens. The Raiders save 4.77 mil. Vegas would then have to eat $5.21 million in dead cap it because of the way that his contract is structured. So sure, you do end up saving a little bit of money here, which is great and all. And then you're telling me after June 1st, you get nineteen point seven five. You can add another $5 million to that for math's sake. We're sitting at twenty four, And then you get another five point seven on top of that. Almost $30 million in salary cap space. That does sound pretty good. I would like for Klee to be able to figure it out, and I would like for Patrick Graham to be able to get it work with him, but I do think Bleacher Report is kind of right here. So be honest with me, y'all. Do you want the Raiders to trade Cleveland Furl? Let me know. Why for yes and for no. This show is about you guys interacting with us in the comments section. So type Y for yes, type N for no. Should the Raiders trade Cleveland Furl? The next story around Devontae Adams, and is Devontae a 99 overall in Madden? I don't play Madden. I am terrible at Madden, but if he's anything less than a 99, you shouldn't go out and buy the game. It's for just win, babies, and we actually got a little bit of a leak here for anybody that does like to play Madden. Here are the six players that are part of the 99 overall club. Patrick Mahomes, FKC, Aaron Donald, Devontae Adams, Miles Garrett, Cooper Cup, and TJ Watt. Yes, there are two receivers on this list, but you know what? Devontae Adams, he might be a 99. Cooper Cup's probably like a 98.9. I'm just going to think in my mind that Devontae is the best receiver in the game. So with June 1st right around the corner, I've been getting asked a lot. Mitch, who are some free agents that we're about to get all this money? Who are the free agents that you would go ahead and target? So the list that you're about to see are not the players that are the most likely to sign the Ra with the Raiders. It is a list that if I had a, I was going to say if I have a phone. I do have a phone. I promise you I have a cell phone. But if I had the power to pick up the phone and call these players, I would do it in this order here. Before I show you my top 10, if you haven't already, hit me up on IG or Twitter. Make sure you do so. I will warn you, I am going to a bachelor party like tomorrow morning if you're watching this live Wednesday I'm gonna be there Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday if any breaking news happens around the silver and black don't worry I'm still gonna be making a video it's just gonna be with me and my crazy buddies from college so stay tuned on all of that in terms of the free agent targets that I see for the Raiders I have it ranked from 1 to 10 and this is how I would pick up the phone and give them a call Daryl Williams if he's not a Raider, I'm going to be mad, but I'm starting to think that it's not going to happen. OBJ, I don't think wide receiver is a major need, but he's a talented player. Anthony Barr, hell of a dude. If you're looking for an inside corner, give me Chris Harris Jr. If not, just found out today that Janoris literally changed his name to Jack Rabbit Jenkins. So we're going to refer to him now as Jack Rabbit Jenkins. At number six, Indama Kitsu, Jamie Collins, Cole Beasley, A.J. Johnson, and then to round out, my top 10 of free agents that I would call after June 1st, getting that 19.75 mil, it's Trey Flowers. So after seeing that list, obviously there's a lot of players out there, and I would imagine that there should be some players that want to sign with Las Vegas. It's a good market. You can make extra money, and the Raiders have some money to spend. So name a free agent 
that the Raiders should sign. If you want to name more than one, if you want to name two or three, all I ask that you do is just go ahead and also include the money that you believe the Raiders would have to pay them. If you want to see even more free agent targets, I actually released a video on Locals yesterday. Raiders free agent targets after June 1st. Here is the thumbnail. You can go over on Locals at RaidersReport.Locals.com and you can go ahead and click on it. If you want to see another video that's Probably one of my favorites. The Raiders will do something that hasn't been done since 1980. Oh, no. What is it going to be? It's also pin, my pin tweet on Twitter, which, of course, Raiders and Chill. I go live at least once a week talking mailbag questions, discussing everything. And this is probably the my new favorite thumbnail that I made or my, to my most recent video on Locals. Ranking the top 10 players on the Raiders right now. If you ain't first, you're last. And if you don't chew Big Red, well, then... All right, let's talk about the next story here. It's around the Raiders. Are they the favorites to sign Colin Kaepernick? Just take a breath. It's for just win, babies. Believe it, baby. But don't just take it from me. It's also according to the latest odds out there. When you do look at the latest odds, the latest are minus 105 for no team to sign Colin. When you see plus 200 for the Raiders, for those of you that don't bet often, that essentially means if you put down $10, you're going to win 20 So you win technically $10. Does that make sense? Then there's plus 750 Carolina at plus 1200 Detroit at plus 1250 And then the field at plus 750 So according to the odds, yes, the Raiders are the most likely team to go out and sign Cap. Speaking of Cap, should the Raiders sign Cap? And I want you to type Cap for yes or no cap for no. This is how I am going to end today's NFL news and Raiders rumors show. So should the Raiders sign Kaepernick, type cap for yes, or type no cap for no. Let's give some shout outs here to the people that are watching. We got 1,000 people tuning in, 300 likes. Y'all are the realest ones out there. If you sent in a super chat, we will get to it during the mailbag. So please, do not panic. We got Freddy Garcia, no cap. Toy, no cap. Ben, FK, no cap. We got Paul saying no, no cap, no cap. A lot of no caps coming in here. Arises says, yo, yes to cap from Gary. Yes cap from Tommy. Cap coming in from Hanzo. Paul's going to say no, no cap from Chuck Norris. How you doing, Chuck? We got Steve Jones cap, no cap from Jack Bishop. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Should the Raiders sign Colin Kaepernick? Now, before I get into the next mailbag, or technically our first mailbag, Mitch, we're going to be doing an extra show on Rumble. It's called Rumble After Hours, and it's going to be eight sleepers that... I think the NFL is sleeping on, but I want Raider fans to just keep in mind. If you're over on Rumble right now and you want a shout-out, please just type Raiders. I'll give you some shout-outs. Shout-out to Gatling Gun 1862 and shout-out to Crazy Sauce number 3. Appreciate you guys tuning in to Rumble. And if you want to watch the Raiders Sleeper segment that I have coming up, you got to go over to Rumble. It's exclusively over there. So this is mailbag time, which... Here's my opportunity to answer your questions. How do you get on your show, or how do you get on the show? You use hashtag Raiders in a question, in a comment. Producer Sam then takes that question, and he puts it up on screen. Obviously, when there are 500 and, well, what, 952 people watching, that's a long line. If you want to skip the line, go to the very front. You send in a super chat. So you send in the super chat. I answer your question. We show you up here. Also, if you send in a super thanks from the week before, we will also go ahead and show you those as well. So coming up now is a Raiders mailbag. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and it is mailbag time. This was filmed on Tuesday, so please keep that in mind in case anything happens after June 1st because I do anticipate a lot of moves going down. Let's go to the first Super Chat coming in here, and it's from Eddie De La Rosa. Mitch, Mitch, could both Renfro and Waller get paid? Yes. And in fact, I think that both of them get paid. I believe Renfro gets his money first, then Waller ends up getting his deal, but either one, it's really not going to imp impact the salary cap all that much. I mean, it might go up a little bit, but realistically, not that much. What up, Cameron Sproul? Could Sue be another Lyle Zod? Uh, here's the issue. The answer is yes, and it's also no. If Indomitian Sue played back in the 70s, 80s, when you could actually hit people, he would have done a lot better. 
But I'll also say he's got to not be so aggressive in today's NFL because not only is he in Dominican Sioux and refs are looking for him, if he's in Dominican Sioux and a Raider, I just don't want to have a Vontez Perfect type of situation. What up, Felipe? Would you, or who would you like to see win the backup quarterback job? I would like to see whoever the heck's the best guy to do it. I don't really have, I don't, I don't want to say I don't care, but I don't really care. Like, if, if it's Nick Mullins, great. If it's Jared Stidham, cool. If Chase Garbers can do it, even better. You know what? Let's, let's say Chase Garbers, because if Chase Garbers can beat out Nick Mullins and he can beat out Jared Stidham, then we can flip Chase Garbers for, I don't know, a fourth round pick, a, fi a, a third, whatever it might be. That, that, that helps out the Raiders in the long run. So my answer is Chase Garbers. Let's go Dixo Solid Dixon. Just laying it on us. What do you think about Eddie Goldman? I know what it is, but it's it's Dick so solid Dixon to me. What about defensive tackle Eddie Goldman and cornerback Kevin King and Bills ex wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders? Well, I would say I've talked about a few of these guys on locals. Go over there and check it out. Eddie Goldman was plan B for me if you couldn't go ahead and get in Dominican Sue. Kevin King, I actually think he kind of sucks, so I'd maybe stay away from him a little bit. And then Emmanuel Sanders is absolutely another receiver that I would love to get. Like if you were to tell me what two receivers who I think are the best bang for your buck right now in free agency, I would say Cole Beasley and I would say Emmanuel Sanders. And that's based on what the Raiders need and overall fit with Derek Carr in this offense because I look for good route runners and intelligent players. And I think both of those guys are fit that case. What up, Jack Bishop? Back-to-back -back. sign Beckham, one year, seven mil. Sue, one year, four mil. Flowers, two years, ten mil. The issue is, I don't know if one year, seven mil is going to be enough for OBJ. Maybe it's one year, seven mil with some extra bonuses. Sue, one for four. Okay, I can wrap my mind around that. And then Flowers, two for ten. I would also be okay with that. Jack Bishop, Mitch, I'd rather have Cam Newton over Colin Kaepernick. I agree with this statement, and it really just comes down to we haven't seen Colin play since 2016. And when he played in 2016 and 2015, he was 3-16 and 16 as a starter. He was not good at throwing the football, and I don't really think he's going to be able to run as effectively. But here's my other take. I would rather have Nick Mullins as a backup quarterback than I would have Cam Newton. Like, I get the fact that some of y'all want the Raiders to run this, I don't know, put in another mobile quarterback just in case thing. I, I just don't really think it makes all that much sense to me. Sorry. Now, we always, when we do these mailbags, I've been telling people, hey, if you can't join the live show, you can go ahead and send in a super thanks. It's a heart-shaped button underneath the video. You click that, get a comment on the show. So shout out to Matthew Van Dyke. Thanks, Gruden. That was his uh, super thanks. O'Neill says, thanks for always being awesome. My wife loves it that I now have even more Raiders content to look at. I actually love these kind of comments because I always find it funny when people are like, or if I meet like a wife or a, a woman, and she's like, my husband listens to you all the time. I can't stand your voice. Good. That makes me happy. And then Mario, appreciate the $10 super thanks. Y'all are the realest ones out there. Much love. Let's keep this mailbag going here. Can I get a Raiders? I'm a little disappointed. I wasn't the first Raiders in the office today. David Zahn sent a super chat on our Bear show, and he made our Bears host say it. What up, Raider Man Zero One? Appreciate you supporting the show. I saw you retracted your comment. If you want to get one up there, just let me know what you guys are thinking. Let's get some questions going. Jorge, or Jorge D, is Leatherwood going to play right tackle? Interesting question. You know, he's working with the offensive tackles. There was a story out there that... Um, he believes that he can be the right tackle. I forget who ended up saying it on a show I did on the Raiders Sport. It was like, I talked to Leatherwood at the NFL draft, and he said that he was going to play tackle. If he wins the job, that's great. But I've watched enough tape on Leatherwood, and it, it does scare me. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Maybe his footwork's better. Maybe he lost a little bit of weight. Maybe Carmen Basile is doing a lot of good things with him. But if Alex Leatherwood is our answer at right tackle... I'm going to be a little bit nervous. I mean, it's just, it's just the God honest truth. Now, I really can't wait to see how Hankins and Bilal Nichols go up against some of these Raiders offensive linemen. But for the sake of the question here, or for sake of uh, another question, who do you believe is the better player? Do you think it's Jonathan Hankins? Because right now, I would say these are our top two defensive tackles on the Raiders. Type JH for Jonathan Hankins. Type BN for Bilal Nichols. The reason why I'm asking you all this is because 
Well, you can come ahead and meet both of them. Where? At this event here. It's silver and black at the code. The date and time is Saturday, June 11th from 1 to 4 p.m. I'm going to be taking on Jonathan Hankins and hopefully some other Raiders players in a competitive burger eating contest. The location, 1590 East Flamingo Road in Las Vegas at Barcode Burger. The ticket price, $20. We're going to be doing raffles. We're going to be doing other giveaways. The proceeds go to the Just One Project, which is a nonprofit or organization that connects community by inspiring people to give back, get involved, and make a difference in the lives of disadvantaged families and children. Our projects positively impact the people we serve and fill their basic needs. The burgers that I'm going to be taking on with Jonathan Hankins, it's going to look like this. No, I'm not going to be starring in some weird porno. This is what the burger looks like, and it's like Four pounds of burger and fries, and I got to do it in 10 minutes. It's not going to be easy. So some of the other players at the event, you can come meet me, Jonathan Hankins, Bilal Nichols, Andre James, Neil Farrell Jr., Jalen Richard, Ken Kendall Vickers. These guys are all going to be at the event. It is confirmed. You can get pictures. You can get autographs with them. Players who I was told might end up showing up. Nate Hobbs and Jonathan Abram, though I'm a little bit worried Abram's going to be like, I hear you talking crap about me. He just comes and just lays the hit stick on me, which I'm totally okay as long as it's for charity. So scan the QR code right here, or you can get your tickets down below at chatsports.com slash burgers. This is going to be a first come, first serve event. The venue holds about 100 people. People. So, if you want to see me take on Jonathan Hankins, if you want to meet some Raiders players, scan that QR code, get your tickets now. The proceeds, they're going to a good charity. Let's go to the next question here on the Raiders Report. It's from Brandon Vaughn. Renfro or Waller, which do you re-sign? You extend both. If you were telling me I had to pick one, this, this might hurt some people's feelings. I will take Darren Waller because I believe Waller is the harder player to replace than Hunter Renfro. But you're gonna you bring both you bring both of these back. You, you have to. What up, Lewis? How confident do you think the Raiders' offense and the defense? So how confident am I in both of these? I would say on a scale of one to ten in the offense, I would give it an eight. On the defensive side of the football, as it stands right now, I would say six. But there is some serious upside for for both of them, and I'm hoping after. We'll say the next few days here with after June 1st and get some extra money. The defense is up to around an eight as well. So pretty pretty solid on both sides of the football. We got Blood Rose. Should the Raiders sign John Ross for cheap and give him a chance to replace Ruggs slash Jackson? I actually don't have a big issue with going out and trying to get John Ross. Yes, there's a lot of speed there in a 4.2240 at the combine. But you can't sit here and say that John Ross is going to do the same role that Henry Ruggs did because Ruggs showed me that he was a lot more complete receiver than, Ru or than Ross ever was. I will say that I was actually quite impressed when he was healthy last season with the New York Giants, but if you're just trying to throw somebody on the field to get a few extra snaps, I would actually rather have John Ross than Will Fuller because Will Fuller is less healthy to me than John Ross and would be a lot cheaper. What up? Mookie Moo, are the Raiders still interested in, in Dominican Sue? Yes, the Raiders are still interested in Sue. I believe right now that the Raiders are the front runners to go out and get him. The fact that Tampa Bay went ahead and they signed Akeem Hicks to the deal that they did on Tuesday, it sounded like the Bucs and it sounded like the Raiders were the top two teams. The Browns sort of fell behind a little bit. So I would say as it stands right now, the Raiders are the favorites to go out and get in Dominican Sue. So comment below. What would be your one-word reaction if the Raiders went ahead and they signed and Dama can sue? I am going to steal producer Sam's answer because he said live. And he meant like, if the Raiders sign Sue, we're going live. So I'll say live, and my other one-word reaction would be lit because that show is going to be live. It's going to be lit. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you got those notifications on because I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it, especially if I'm at some random bachelor party with all my buddies. Daniel Caps Keenan. Mitch, I think Hankins will eat more than you than eat you. <laughs> Raiders! I hope not. I'll also say this. Don't underestimate me. I can eat a lot of food, and I believe that I want to win a lot more than Hankins does. I, I don't even know if Hankins cares. I care. And for that reason, I'm going to bet on myself. I can eat a lot of food, believe it or not. Let's go to Raider Man 01, $5 Super Chat. 
I kind of want the Raiders to go with a black helmet. What do you guys think? Do you, I understand a lot of people don't like the idea of a blacked out jersey because the Raiders have the, already the best jerseys in football and why you know change it if it's not broken essentially. But all black jerseys would be sick. Can, I, can we get a hallelujah on that? Let's go to Christopher McGuire. What up, bro? Sue, Daryl Williams, and an extension for Waller and Renfro. Can it happen? Can it happen? Yes. Be, and what needs to end up happening is you can't put the salary cap up too much for Waller and for Renfro. So I believe that Renfro right now is going to make about $2.6 million this season. You only up that a little bit. Maybe you take Wallers down, give him a little bit more cash up front, and then you got to hope that Daryl Williams isn't over $10 million. So, guys, we make videos on YouTube. We're actually live right now on Rumble for those of you that are watching this live. I want to be able to make more content for the Silver and Black. I want to be able to make more content for Raider Nation. So if you haven't already, please, it helps me put a roof over my head food on my table and give you guys more content give us a follow over on rumble at rumble.com slash raiders support need 246 more to get to 2000 let's go ahead and do it let's go to jersey balboa how would you feel if the raiders starting o-line is colt miller dylan parham andre james denzel good alex leatherwood if that's the best five that we can put together, then so be it. I have been told that the Raiders will go with the best five. So if that means that that's the best five, awesome. I am still going to go ahead and bet on my best five, which is Colt Miller, Denzel Good, Parham. Then you have Alex Otherwood at right guard, Brandon Parker at right tackle. No matter what combination you give me right now with the current Raiders players on this roster, I'm going to be a little bit nervous because the only guy that I have the utmost confidence in is Colt Miller. What up, Raider Carlos? Will there be autographs at Barcode? Yes. If you pay the $20 admission to get in at chatsports.com slash burgers, autographs, pictures, you get to meet the players. It's $20 and all that, all the proceeds, they go to a charity. Plus, you get to watch me eat burgers. The event's from 1 to 4 o'clock. So, three hours, Raiders players, me. It's going to be a cool event, I promise you. What up, Matter Raider? I saw your NFL show on Chat Sports, and you said that the Raiders should get T.O. Why? Well, that's actually not 100% true. I talked about a story where Marcus Peters said that Terrell Owens can come back or he should be back in the NFL, and I listed the Raiders there because I was like, if Las Vegas is going to try out Colin Kaepernick, who hasn't played since 2016, I jokingly said, well, maybe the Raiders will also try out Terrell Owens, who hasn't played in since 2010. I also said that T.O. is not going to come back to the NFL. But you know what? This is kind of a fun question here. So will T.O. ever play in the NFL again? He's a Hall of Fame wide receiver, top five in a lot of statistical categories. And hell, his last season with Cincinnati was a pretty impressive one. He is right now playing in some sort of professional league. What is it? The Fan Controlled Football League, which that would be pretty interesting. He's with Manziel. Same league as Johnny Manziel. I'm sorry, I don't follow the Fan Controlled Football League, but maybe I will. Why for yes and for no is T.O. ever coming back? I miss a lot of y'all's questions, and I apologize, but that's also because the Raiders report, it gets wild, it gets crazy, and I appreciate everyone that takes time out of their day so, if you want to stay up to date with news and rumors, I got you covered on social media. Whether that's Instagram, whether that's Twitter, I got you covered. And, if you want to see what the hell I'm doing this weekend for my buddy's bachelor party, I don't know, it's maybe another reason to go ahead and give me a follow. Alright, let's go to Devin. Devin, what happened, man? You choked. Game 7. Do you think the Raiders sign OBJ? Do I think the Raiders show interest in him? Yes. If you were to ask me how many just win babies on it, I'd give it about a half a just win baby. We got to be able to face the facts that the Raiders don't need Odell. Would it help? Yes. Are there other major needs? Yes. But if OBJ wanted to come to the silver and black, the Raiders would be stupid not to go ahead and bring him in. Super chat time coming in from Cameron Sproul. Is it true that John Simpson is the strongest offensive lineman? And if so, why can't he get it together? You know, I've actually heard from another Raiders or former Raiders player that John Simpson, pound for pound, was actually one of the strongest people that he's ever seen. But on top of that, 
Simpson's footwork is not all that great. And a lot of times when you're an offensive lineman, you need to be able to recognize a play. At, in college, he was able to get away with the fact that his play recognition, I would say, is slightly below average, that his footwork was slightly below average, and he could just bowl people over. Plus, the chemistry on the Raiders' offensive line last year was a little bit lackluster, a lot of people moving in and out, and he had to do a lot more. So I think from a he needs to get better standpoint, he absolutely does, but that's why, because being an offensive lineman is a lot more than just being really strong. All right, y'all, name a player on the Raiders about to break out. Also, I learned today that if you phrase this sentence like this, break out, you have to put a space in it because it's a verb. So there you go. Name a player on the Raiders about to break out. But if it's Raiders breakouts, then it's together. It's crazy. It's a, it's almost like science. I mean, you, you just can't even make it up. So name a player on the Raiders about to break out. I, I know, this is ridiculous. But what we're going to be going through here is six players on the roster right now that I see taking the next step and having a career year. Before I go ahead and give my names, let me know what you guys are thinking. In the comment section right now, I got Jake says Mad Max, Daniel Diablo, Hefe says, uh, we got Hustlin' Hooligan, Carr, Nate Hobbs or Divine Diablo from Eric. Rocky Sin from Flame. Tyree Gillespie from David. Cameron Sproul, Tyree Gillespie. We got Foster coming in from LI Raider 312. Well, Darren Waller from Peak Boogie. Mad Max from Cynthia. LC Raider is going to go with Gillespie. Abram from Derek. Mad Max from Cynthia. Jonathan Abram from Leonard. Let me know who is going to be a player that ends up breaking out for the Raiders this upcoming season. Before I get into that segment, we are going to be doing a Rumble After Hours show around some players that shh, people are sleeping on. And I'm telling you to wake up because they deserve some recognition and that's going to be eight players. So I figured, you know what, for the Rumble audience, we'll, we'll up the ante here a little bit. So give us a follow on Rumble at rumble.com slash Raiders Report. That link is going to be available for you all in the comments and in the description of today's show. So if you want to see the video before it goes out on YouTube days in advance, just go on Rumble right now. I got you covered. So seriously, stay tuned. Rumble After Hours coming up in about, what, 30 all right, Sam said sure. He makes the rules. Coming up in about 30 minutes from right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, we're going to be looking at some Raiders breakout candidates in 2022. I do have a few roles for my breakout candidates. One, they can't be a rookie. And when I personally think of a breakout year, I think of a career season for that player. So I got six players on tap. No particular order. Let's go to the first guy here, and it's Nate Hobbs, cornerback, entering the second year in the NFL. This is definitely one of the biggest steals that the Silver and Black have had over the past few seasons. He's extremely athletic, and he's already grabbing the attention of the new Raiders coaching staff. I mean, the fact that he's been working at safety, the fact that there's been reports of him potentially playing outside corner, what I hear is, they just want him on the field any way humanly possible because he's a good player. Started nine games last season, playing 837 snaps on defense. He also added 171 snaps on special teams. He's six foot one, 200 pounds. He had 74 tackles, three PBUs, a forced fumble last season, and an interception, and continued to get better and better. And realistically, from the moment he stepped on the field, you knew that the Raiders had someone pretty special here. When you look at his PFF grades, he had a 78.4 overall grade, which for cornerbacks is impressive. It's actually top 10 according to PFF. And for a rookie, that's sensational. Run defense grade, 78.8. Pass rush grade, 78.0. Coverage, 75.5. Are there rooms for improvement? Yes. Do I think he's going to be able to improve in Patrick Graham's system? Yes. So from a coverage stat standpoint, he was targeted 62 times, but I'm okay with a player giving up catches when it's 51 catches and only for 399 yards. 
51 catches, 399 yards. Imagine a receiver doing that. It's, it's actually very impressive on Nate Hobbs' behalf, especially as a rookie. So every single day I do this show, I think of, honestly, this show, my life is a video game. I'm trying to always level up, and I need you guys to help me level up. I want to get to 115,000 subscribers. We need 606 more. If you're a diehard fan, if you bleed silver and black, if you yell, Raiders, to random people walking down the street that are repping the shield subscribe turn on those notifications we're the channel for you let's go to the next breakout candidate here it's Trevon Merrick and to me this dude is a do it all safety another guy entering year two and personally the key word that I see or that I think about when I watch Patrick Graham's tape especially at the safety position versatility that's what Merrick is that's why he was the Best defensive back in college football in 2020. And honestly, I thought he should have been a first-round pick in 2021. Slid down a little bit. But not only that, he played in 100% of the snaps last season. 1,152. He's a dog. He's somebody who I can't wait to see get better and better and better. And a player that I thought got better and better and better. And the fact that now he's going to have a little bit more help at safety should only help his growth. He's going to be able to learn next to somebody like Deron Harmon. He's not going to have to carry the weight of Jonathan Abram as much this year. So coming off here, he had 55 tackles, a pick and six PBUs, 72.5 overall grade according to PFF. His only area of, of improvement, I would say run defense, but I also think that number is so low because the Raiders' defense was not very good at stopping the run, and he's going to have to try to tackle running backs and other players bowling down on him. The number I care about, the coverage grade, 77.7. You draft a safety in today's NFL that can cover, and that's what Merrick's able to do. He saw 24 targets last season, gave up 14 grabs. Usually safeties give up a little bit higher in terms of yards per catch. Why? Because they're safeties, and he did give up two touchdowns. Travon Merrick, up-and-coming safety in the NFL, and I really truly believe after the season, we remark him as a top-10 safety in the league. So, you're not going to see Jonathan Hankins. You're not going to see Neil Farrell Jr. on the list of my breakout candidates. I'm sorry. But I do want to know, who's the better player? Type JH for Jonathan Hankins. Type NF for Neil Farrell Jr. But even though you might not see him here on my breakout show, if you want to meet Jonathan Hankins and Neil Farrell Jr., if you want to get an autograph from them, if you want to take a picture with them, well, hey, Put this date in your calendar right now and come and join Chat Sports. Me and a whole bunch of other Raiders players when I go ahead and I try to take on Jonathan Hankins in a burger-eating competition. June 11th from 1 to 4 p.m. Location, barcode burgers. You can see the address on screen. The ticket price to get in is $20, but all the proceeds, everything we get from the raffle, those proceeds will go to the Just One Project, which is a nonprofit organization that connects community by inspiring people to give back get involved, and make a difference in the lives of disadvantaged families and children. Our projects positively impact the people we serve and fill their basic needs. If you're wondering what kind of burger challenge are we doing, I got 10 minutes. Hankins and I am... We might ask a few other people that end up showing up to go ahead and try to take us on. It's a three and a half pound burger. It's another nine ounces of fries. It's a lot of food that's going to leave you all being like... Yeah, other players at the event. I mentioned Hankins, I mentioned Neil Farrell Jr., Bilal Nichols, Andre James, Kendall Vickers, former Raiders running back Jalen Rashard, and players who might show up, Nate Hobbs and Jonathan Abram. So get your tickets right now at chatsports.com slash burgers, or you can go ahead and scan the QR code right here. It's going to be first come, first serve. We got about 100 tickets available, and once they're gone, they're gone. So come rep the silver and black, and have a good time. Chatsports.com slash burgers, or go ahead and scan the QR code. Let's go to the next player here. I love burgers, and I love double Ds. Shout out to Divine Diablo. He's going to be a breakout candidate for me. His versatility is going to work extremely well in Graham's defensive system. When he was at Virginia Tech, he was a strong safety. Remember what Tanner Muse was supposed to be? That's what Divine Diablo is. He finished the season strong, like, I thought he finished the season very, very strong for the Raiders. Played in 296 snaps, only 26%. So I see that, and I'm like, there's growth there. He can get better. And at six foot three, 226 pounds, he impressed me quite a bit, honestly, in the run-stopping game. 45 tackles, a tackle for loss, PBU, one force, or fumble recovery. The area that I could see him needing to improve upon 
is his coverage ability. And in year two, and a defense that I actually think is going to help him be a little bit more flexible and be a better coverage linebacker is going to be this Patrick Graham system. If he does what he did last season from a passing rush standpoint, from a run defense standpoint, and can improve as a coverage linebacker, which I actually thought was one of his better traits as a strong safety coming out of Virginia Tech, he's going to be able to take that next step. Now, sure, he was targeted 13 times, gave up nine catches, 141 yards, no touchdowns last season, but it's year two. I am looking for the rookie to take that next step and hopefully be a standout linebacker that we can rely on for quite some time. We're three players in, which means we got three more to go, and the next three names are bigger name players in. Colton Miller. But Mitch, didn't Colton Miller already break out? Remember how I said career year? This is going to be Colt Miller's best year that you've ever seen. He's a top 10 offensive tackle right now. This is the year that he goes ahead and becomes a top 5 offensive tackle. Why? He continues to get better every single season. He's a phenomenal athlete who works his ass off. And you already hear Josh McDaniel saying, this guy's a really hard working dude. On top of that, if Colt Miller was that good with Tom Cable... I can't wait to see what he's going to do with Carmen Brasillo, an offensive line coach that actually knows what the hell he's talking about. Last season, 1,139 snaps. He sure he had five penalties against them, gave up four sacks, and gave up five hits. But I also watched the tape. I also watched the games. I'm not going to put all those blame on him because when you have to... When you have to try to also help out John Simpson or whoever the hell else is playing left guard, you got to do a lot of other things. I know if there's somebody who's reliable there at left guard, Colt Miller is going to hold his own. He's the anchor of the offensive line and somebody who's going to get better and better and better. So the overall grade of 84.0 is one of the best in the league. I truly believe that Colton Miller is going to get better this upcoming season. So Rumble Y'all is all about doing whatever the hell I want over there. So how about this? It worked when I was a kid. If somebody came up to me and was like, no balls, you won't, I I, I did it. Like it's just I, I did it. So I don't think you're gonna follow us on Rumble. No balls, you won't do it. You don't have the cojones to go to rumble.com slash Raiders Report. You don't have the peaches, you don't have the fur on those peaches to go ahead and give the Raiders Report a follow on Rumble right now. Let's go to the next player here who I know for a fact is going to have a breakout season. And some of y'all are like, timeout, Mitch. Crosby already broke out last year. Well, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on social media, and there's a lot of people out there that don't think so. Why? Because Crosby, Crosby has only one season with 10-plus sacks. So to me, he still deserves some recognition because he had an incredible season last year. And I would say true diehard fans know how legitimate he is. He played in 925 snaps, 80%, which is slightly down from 83% from the year before. But when you think of a phenomenal player, 55 tackles, 8 sacks, 13 tackles for lost 7 PBUs, I get the idea that some people want him to have double-digit sacks. Well, guess what? He's going to have it this upcoming season. And from a statistical standpoint alone is why I put him on this list because there are people out there that think 8 sacks isn't a breakout year. But then they don't look at how many QB pressures he had or how many QB hits or all the other stuff that he brings to the table on a daily basis. On top of that, Gus Bradley's defense never blitzed. So he was going four on four, essentially, or four against five is what the Raiders defensive line was doing. And he was still getting after the quarterback. This might be a crazy thing to think about. If the Raiders blitz more, that's going to give Max Crosby more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Also, how many times last season did Crosby get held that wasn't called? Or how many times did I actually think Crosby ended up getting a sack and there was a penalty on some BS call? I know this. I look at how talented Max is on the field, and then you go ahead and you translate that to the numbers. He is going to have a statistical season that I'm telling you, buckle up 15-plus sacks for Mad Max. The final player for my breakout candidates, it's Derek Carr. Yes, DC, the quarterback. He's going to have the best season of his entire career. And he had a good start to 2021, but he didn't really finish the season all that strong from a statistical standpoint. 23 touchdowns, 19 turnovers. But the way I look at it is this. When I look at breakout candidates, sometimes I look at players on one-year deals and Derek essentially has a one-year prove-it deal when you really look at his contract. And this is the most talented roster on the offensive side of the football that Carr has ever had. Yes, the offensive line still has some question marks. Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, Foster Moreau, Josh Jacobs, Keelan Cole, and Marcus Robinson. Like, this is a very talented team. So essentially, 
I look at what D.C. did last year, 4,804 yards. That's good. The touchdown numbers need to go up. And I really truly believe everyone who's watching right now would agree, if Carr doesn't throw for 30 touchdowns, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Here's the thing, though. When you look at some of his numbers from his first seven games last season, essentially before Henry Ruggs' situation, he had a 67.6% completion percentage, 2,269 yards, 12 touchdowns, 5 turnovers. And if you look at that from a 17-game pace, obviously you can't always sit here and say, oh, that's what he would have done if he would have had Ruggs. But these numbers are very impressive. He has a new offensive coordinator. He has a new head coach. Both of those, I believe, are going to help him be more efficient in the red zone. So you're going to see Carr set a career high in touchdowns. He's going to turn the ball over less. The yards might stay at around 4,800. But the fact that D.C. is going to have a breakout year, it's because he's going to have the best year of his career. So those were six names. But you know what I'm going to say. Let me know. Another player on this Raiders roster that you're like, dude, you forgot this guy. He's going to have a breakout season. So please let me know another player that you believe could break out this upcoming season. So one more time here, if you haven't, if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you guys always tuning in, always watching. Take a screenshot of this, post it on Twitter, post it on Instagram, hell, post it on Facebook. I don't care where it is, Reddit, MySpace, uh, AOL Instant Messenger, Post it on there. Let's spread the word of the Raiders report, the Raiders breakout candidates for this upcoming season. Are you guys tired? Are you sleepy? I know it's getting a little bit later on in the day. Type Y for yes. Type N for no. And I say that as Sam's back here yawning right now on me. The reason why I'm saying are you tired is because wake up. We got a rumble after hours segment, and it's around Players that people are sleeping on. So if you're a little bit snoozy, go get a coffee. Go ahead, get a, I don't know, some panda sups in you. Wake the hell up here a little bit because we got a rumble after hours segment that I need you guys to wake the heck up for. And it's going to be coming up after this Raiders mailbag. So if you have a question, you have a comment, you want to yell at me, you want to tell the Raider Nation to uh, wake the heck up, use hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and super chat to the people that have already sent in those supers. Like I just saw Hunter Rengoat. Hunter Rengoat. We will get to that question, and then we will go ahead and look at everything. So use hashtag Raiders or send in a super chat to get those questions, those comments. Oh, God. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice. Hang on a second. Man down. Man down. 850 people watching. Like the video. Helps me out quite a bit. Once this mailbag is done, that's when we're going to go to Rumble After Hours. So please, hashtag Raiders. Get those questions, those comments in the show right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and this is... The Raiders Rumors Mailbag, where I answer questions from the live audience here. And remember, I go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. If you haven't already, subscribe. Join our live shows. And if you're like, well, I work during your live shows, that's fine. You can send in a super thanks. But to make sure that you never miss anything, subscribe. Turn on those notifications right now to the people that I know for a fact have their notifications on. They're always one of the first people to comment below. So Untouchable Raider 1960, SRL Spirits, Phil, Pat Beldez, and Eric Williams, I salute you. I say thank you for being a part of the Noti Gang. If you want to have a future shout-out on the show, you got to be one of the first people to comment on my video. Let's go to a super chat from Hunter Rengo. Jalen Ramsey's father just passed, th just passing through. Are you saying that he passed away? I'm not 100% sure. Jalen Ramsey's father just passed. Oh, I know what you're saying. No, Hunter Renfro is Jalen Ramsey's daddy. So that's what it is. At first, Sam and I were like, I don't know exactly what's happening. Yes, Hunter Renfro, Jalen Ramsey's daddy. Let's go to LC Raider. I see the Raiders slip down to plus 4,000 to win it all. Mitch, I think it's time to put some money down. It's funny that you say that. Uh, the bets that I have already made, which... You're right. I got the Raiders at plus 3,500 odds, which means if you put down $10, you can win 350 if they do end up winning it. Technically, you win 340 because you put down 10 But I have plus 3,500 on the Raiders winning it all, and I got Derek Carr at plus 5,000 odds. I got it at that because it was before the Devontae Adams trade. 
Let's go to B. Ray. Do you think Carr's fumbles will go down this year and why either way? It's kind of a tough thing to say. I personally don't think that the fumbles are going to go away because it's not a one-year problem. It's been a career problem. And, yeah, he's got smaller hands compared to some other quarterbacks. I mean, since, since coming into the NFL in 2014, Derek Carr has twice as many fumbles as any other player. Twice as many. It, it's a fumbling problem for D.C. Do I hope that number comes down a little bit? Of course I do. But do I think it's going to go away? No. Let's go to 10 Cup 45. Could the Raiders trade for Patriots offensive tackle Isaiah Wynn? I've seen the reports out there that Wynn wants a new deal. He's scheduled to make $10.4 million, wants a brand new contract. However... I don't really see the point of going out and getting Isaiah Wynn, who you're probably going to have to give up a third, fourth round pick for him, pay him $10.4 million this season, then go ahead and give him a contract extension. Not that he's not a talented player, but he plays left tackle. If I'm going to spend $10.4 million on Wynn, I would just rather give $10.4 million to Daryl Williams, who, sure, I get he's older, but Daryl's a right tackle and... I, 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 so, no, I like the question. I, I appreciate it, but I'd rather invest my money in Daryl Williams instead. Cappy Cap Daniel Keenan. Okay, Mitch, think, think, think. What wide receiver is going to step up after Adams, Waller, Renfro? That's the real question. So, you're right, because I would say the person who can get the fourth amount of targets on the roster, it's going to be a race between Keelan Cole, Demarcus Robinson, and I'm not going to throw Josh Jacobs in there, but in terms of fourth on the red zone targets, I could say somebody like Foss Moreau, maybe even Brandon Bolden who had 41 catches last season. I'm putting my money on Keelan Cole, but I really think it could be Cole or Demarcus Robinson. Both of these players, they're not going to catch many footballs this season. But if you had to say, they're going up against each other, right? Oklahoma drills, that was, that's what it's called, right? Jonathan Hankins, Andre James, who wins? J.H. for Hankins? AJ for Andre James. I can't guarantee you that they're going to do an Oklahoma drill. I can guarantee you this. Both are going to be in Las Vegas at this event that I am running. Jonathan Hankins and I, we're going to do a burger eating competition and all the proceeds are going to go to the Just One Project. The date and time, Saturday, June 11th from 1 to 4 p.m. The location, Barcode Burgers in Las Vegas. You can see the address on screen. It's $20 a ticket. We're also going to do raffles. There's going to be signings, autographs, giveaway, and the proceeds go to the Just One Project, which is a nonprofit organization that connects community by inspiring people to get back, get involved, and make a difference in the lives of disadvantaged families and children. Our projects positively impact the people we serve and fill their basic needs. Now, the burger that I'm taking down with Hankins, it's like four pounds of burger and fries. You get 10 minutes to do it. I'm going to make a fool of myself. But I'm telling you what, I can eat a lot of food. And Hankins, I'm telling you, man, you're going down. If you want to see the autographs, if you want to take pictures, if you want to see me try to tackle a burger, that's great. Here are some other players at the event that you will be able to meet. Jonathan Hankins, Bilal Nichols, Andre James, Neil Farrell Jr., former Raiders running back Jalen Richard, Kendall Vickers. You will be able to sit down, maybe not sit down, but at least take a picture and meet all these guys. Some other players who might end up showing up. I don't know if they're going to be here. I was told they will, but I was also told they might not. So it's Nate Hobbs, Jonathan Abrams. So all I'm saying, y'all, is get your tickets now because the tickets are going to go fast. Chatsports.com slash burgers. Here's a QR code that you can go ahead and scan as well. There's about enough room for 100 people here. It will be first come, first serve. For $20 an event like this, I'm telling you, it's a hell of a deal. Let's go to Coxie Pup. Forget everyone else. Raiders sign right tackle Darrell Williams and Sue defensive tackle. That would be the difference in just making the playoffs or making the conference championship slash Super Bowl. I do think that both of these players make a whole lot of sense. I would also add another cornerback, maybe Chris Harris Jr. or Janoris Jenkins. But Coxie Pup, you and I, we're, we're, on, the, we're on the same page, my man. Cameron Sproul, one of the OGs. Mitch, I see the Raiders winning the division with a 10-7 and record due to everybody knocking each other all this season. I'm going to say no, and 10 and 7 is going to be a good record, right? And if the Raiders go 10 and 7, it's still going to be impressive because of how difficult their schedule is. I just I personally believe that one team will win more than 10 games in this division because yes, all four teams are very competitive. All four teams are going to beat up each other. It's just 10 and 7 is a little bit low for 
an overall division winner. David Taken, I was wondering when you'd uh, tune in, bro. Please sign Williams. I am not comfortable with the right side our, uh, of our offensive line. I'm with you. I mean, my confidence level in the line on the right side, 5 out of 10, 4 out of 10. Is there upside there? Yeah, of course. Like, I know Dylan Parham is going to be a hell of a player. I'm hoping that Alex Leatherwood can be a first-round pick. If Brandon Park can get a shit together a little bit, if Andre James can take that next step, the Raiders have the upside to be a good offensive line. But I also said that last year. And, well, we were a bottom five offensive line. If you want even more Raiders content, like let's say I missed your question here on our live show on YouTube. I won't miss your questions. I won't miss your comments on Locals. Why? It's a smaller audience, but it's also a more intimate audience, which is why I like Locals. Because imagine we're like sitting down at a bar. I can talk to you guys, and that's what Locals is all about here. And I've actually been able to meet a lot of people personally through local. So if you want to support the show, it's a great way to do it. If you want extra Raiders content because you're a Raiders content junkie like myself, then please go to RaidersReport.Locals.com where you can watch some of the videos that I've made recently. Raiders free agent targets after June 1st. The Raiders will do something that hasn't been done since 1980. This is also pinned on my Twitter account. Raiders and chill. I make two videos every single week. I also go live at least once a week interacting with the crowd and Somebody asked me to do this on local, so I went ahead and did it. Ranking the top 10 players on the Raiders. Right now, I start at 10. Work my way all the way down to 1. If the Raiders report, you like it on YouTube. You're also going to like us on locals as well. It's more Raiders content. Let's go to Blood. What up, bro? Breakout. Kenyon Drake will be like James White when he is in the middle of the Patriots offense. Expect more dynamic and explosiveness than James White. I If, if Kenyon was 100% healthy... I would like this idea. The other thing that I'm going to just say pump the brakes on it is the fact that the Raiders went out and got Brandon Bolden. The Raiders' current staff, they like Bolden a lot, and he is going to take a little bit away from Drake. Also, the way that they restructure Drake's contract tells me that this new regime isn't 100% sold on Drake. So just please keep that in mind. The Raiders are an incredible organization. A lot of great, great players have come through the ranks, and a lot of guys that... You know what, man, I wish I wish I could have seen live. You can always go back and watch highlights. You can see a lot of things. But watching a player live or in real time, it just hits different. So all I ask is this. Who's your favorite Raiders player ever? All time. If you want to say a current player, that's totally fine. But I'm talking about the guys in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the early 2000s. When you sit back and you're like, you know what? That was the guy. That's the player I like. Who is it? Let me know. What you guys think down in the comments section right now. Your favorite Raiders player of all time for the OGs, Charles Woodson, Bo Jackson. Those are my guys. Let's go to the next one. Coming in from, I thought this was Adam Sandler. Uh, believe JH will win, but Mitch has got to eat. So you're thinking Jonathan Hank is going to beat me. Until he pukes, I mean, does that count? Do you have to keep the food down? I would say yes, you do have to keep the food down. The reason why I think I'm going to win is because I want to win more. Jonathan Hankins probably doesn't care if he wins or loses in this matchup. I do. I have a lot riding on this, and it's my personal pride. So the most food I've ever eaten in one sitting, I ate 72 wings in 32 in 30 minutes, which I don't know how much that translates to, but burgers are my favorite food. So the fact that burgers are my favorite food, what I'm most worried about is eating that much food, and it's like 110 degrees out in Las Vegas because when it gets really hot, I don't typically eat as much. And I don't know if I'm going to have time to get a workout in. If I work out, Hankins, I'm telling you, watch out. I'm going to be bringing my A game. Let's go to Dylan from 305. Could Malcolm Kuntz be a surprise cut? So Kuntz was drafted in the third round out of Buffalo last season. Didn't really play at all, which was a little bit concerning. I thought they should have given him a few extra reps. When I look at Kuntz, I've always thought of him more as an outside linebacker, edge rusher than as a true defensive end. So maybe this new regime can get it working a little bit with them. But would it surprise me? Yes, it would. But also, if this new regime is not 100% committed to them, then sometimes you just got to go ahead and move on. I'm going to say no, but I also don't think it's totally impossible either. This, this week, y'all, it's going to be a weird week for me. I'm just telling y'all right now, I'm going to be at a bachelor party. My best friend from college, he's uh, getting married. So me and all my college buddies and some of his friends as well, we're going to be getting a uh, bachelor pad. 
in like the middle of the Poconos. I don't know exactly where we're going to be. I should probably figure that out. So if any news or rumors ends up happening, I'm going to try to keep you guys up to date. And if anything crazy happens, I will be going live from some random cabin in the Poconos. Hopefully the Wi-Fi is working. And if the Wi-Fi is working, it's going to be me. It's going to be all my buddies partying on the Raiders report. So seriously, tune in and let's get wild. Let's go to MM and L77. Why are you confident in Denzel Good? He is a proven, good, versatile offensive lineman. The reason why I'm not 100% sold on Denzel right now is because the last time I saw Denzel, he was a good offensive lineman. But the ACL injury can impact people in different ways. Let's just say it makes Denzel a little bit less good. And that if that makes him an average guy that, who knows, I don't know if he's going to be 100% healthy. He is healthy right now, but that injury can hurt a lot of different people in different ways. And when you're over 300 pounds, it's a little bit different. So I'm confident in Denzel, healthy Denzel. Slightly healthy Denzel good is where I get worried because I don't want another Richie Incognito situation where you rely on a guy, he's not there, and then you're kind of in a bad situation. What up, Caesar? What up, Mitch? Mine was Tyrone Wheatley and Charles Woodson and Charlie Gardner. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so your favorite Raiders of all time. You know, I wish I could have watched Wheatley because he was just an absolute menace, I feel like, if you're trying to tackle that guy. Charlie Gardner, another stud. But Charles, to me, is just on a whole other level. And, but uh, I appreciate the super chat and you letting me know who your favorite Raiders of all time are. What up, Dick So Solid? Dixon. Another super chat. Sleeper, Matt Collins. Breakout, Trayvon Mullen and Robertson. You know, I would consider Trayvon could be a potential breakout. If Amik broke out, that would be wild to me. I would say Amik's more of a sleeper because he hasn't done anything yet. But if Matt Collins, who is an extremely athletic player, can get some work in the red zone and he impresses early on, he could be a dude that might not get a lot of receptions, might not even get a lot of yards, but he had four touchdowns last season, and the Raiders want to be able to improve in the red zone. So very interesting, very interesting on all those names. Cameron Sprout, another super chat. You're one of the OGs. The 70s Raiders were true Raiders who the current team could fit right in with them. So you're asking me who on the current roster right now could fit with the 70s Raiders? I mean, I'll go off the top of my head. I'll say Crosby to me because Crosby's just somebody who I really truly believe there's like that old saying like, you know, he's going to get, he's going to come in there. He's going to work his freaking tail off. Denzel Perriman uh, would be a hell of a name because he just hits the shit out of people. And uh, back in those days, you didn't have to cover as well. So I would say Denzel, Max Crosby, and I believe that Devontae Adams would be good on just about any team he's on. All right, y'all, we're getting ready to wrap up the live show here on YouTube, which means we're going to be heading on over to Rumble right now. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, because we go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. If I go live again before then, it's because there was breaking news, which those shows I do definitely don't want you to miss because those are the shows that Raider Ron gets me trashed. David Zahn show up and we just, we leave stumbling. Do you know what though? I'll be stumbling at a bachelor party. So if you're looking for daily Raiders videos and all um, extra live shows, subscribe to the Raiders board, the number one most watched Raiders YouTube channel right now. So we are getting ready to switch over. Before we do, David Zahn just sent in a super chat. So appreciate David. David, you can, uh, I love the supers as always, but let's let's get the party going on Rumble, which uh, I know you always know how to do. And we're gonna be partying tomorrow at some random bar in Philadelphia, which I'm actually pretty stoked about because the menu looks pretty good. Raiders, what? I don't know, David. You're you're the one sending it in, so that's that's what it's about. We're gonna head on over now to Rumble, so it's Rumble.com/slash Raiders Report. The segment that we're gonna be doing over there is we're going to be looking at some sleepers. Eight players that the rest of the NFL is sleeping on that I don't want Raider Nation to sleep on. Here's your last chance. We're going over to Rumble 